Today we will fly a VOR slash DME approach in low visibility IFR conditions. We are flying from Chihalis, Centralia Airport to Olympia Regional in Olympia, Washington. We will fly this VOR slash DME approach into runway 35 at Olympia Regional. The flight visibility at Olympia Regional was just over one statute mile, which is just above the legal minimums to attempt the VOR slash DME approach. We have tuned the first navigation frequency to the Olympia VOR, frequency 113.4. We then switch it to the active frequency by hitting the swap navigation button. We then click the PFD opt button at the bottom of the G1000 after tuning the DME equipment to see the DME distances displayed under the CDI. After completing our pre takeoff checklist, we begin our takeoff roll. The rotation speed, also known as the VR speed, for the Cessna 172 is about 55 knots. Once airborne, we will begin our climb to a cruising altitude of about 4,200 feet. Notice in the upper left-hand corner of the screen that the DME equipment has picked up the Olympia VOR and we are currently just over 17 nautical miles from the Olympia VOR. The DME can also be found near the bottom of the G1000 flight display. We have tuned the waypoint of Rhines into the GPS and are just over 6 nautical miles from the Rhines waypoint. We are maintaining our ascent rate of between 600 to 700 feet per minute and will level off just before reaching our cruising altitude. Upon reaching the Rhines waypoint, we will change the CDI to the Olympia VOR. As you can see, the VOR is displayed in green and the GPS is displayed in magenta. As you can see from the IFR map in the upper right, the Rhine's waypoint is on the 201 degree radial of the Olympia VOR. Notice how the CDI needle centers when we turn the OBS knob to a heading of 201 degrees and the DME is confirming we are 0.3 nautical miles from the Rhine's waypoint. The 2 from indicator is showing a from indication confirming our position on the 201 degree radial of the Olympia VOR. The initial approach fixed to intercept this DME arc for the VOR approach into runway 35 is at OZYO. OZYO is also on the 201 degree radial of the Olympia VOR. Notice how the 2 slash from indicator now shows a 2 indication when we turn the CDI needle to a heading of 21 degrees, which is the 180 degree reciprocal of 201 degrees. The DME confirms our location just over 15 nautical miles from the Olympia VOR. The OZYO waypoint is 15.3 nautical miles from the Olympia VOR as shown in the approach chart. We are about 200 feet below the minimum altitude to fly the DME arc, which is 4,200 feet. We will keep climbing to make sure we are above the minimum altitude of 4,200 feet to fly this DME arc. We will now fast forward a bit in the flight. We are flying the DME arc and are 15.2 nautical miles from the Olympia VOR. We have turned the CDI needle to heading of 356 since that is the final approach course for this VOR approach. We are 2.3 nautical miles from the initial fix of Joglu. Upon reaching the initial fix of Joglu, we will begin our turn onto the final approach course of 356. Once established on the final approach course, we will aim to keep the CDI needle centered on a course of 356. We are now a little over 7 nautical miles from the scoot waypoint. We are aiming to keep our descent rate steady descending at a rate of roughly 500 feet per minute. Here's a quick tip for how to calculate required descent rate on an E6B calculator. We will enter our airspeed of 107 knots, since that is the indicated airspeed and the winds are calm, altitude of 3,420 feet, and the target crossing altitude of 1,700 feet at the fix of scoot which is 7 nautical miles away. Entering these variables into our calculator we find that we need to maintain a descent rate of about 438 feet per minute. 
Another quick easy way to find required descent rate is ground speed multiplied by 5. This rough calculation will not be as accurate as an E6B calculator but can work for rough estimation purposes. The key to remember is to watch the altitude and not to descend below the minimum altitudes published in the approach plate. We are currently to the left of course and will fly back towards the right towards the needle to get back on the approach course. We are still about 4 nautical miles from the fix of Scoot. We will now jump forward a little bit in the flight. We just passed Scoot and are now 4.2 nautical miles from COYAS which is 0.6 nautical miles from the Olympia Vortac and the edge of runway 35. Notice the black V in the approach chart which is 2.5 nautical miles from the Olympia Vortac. This is known as a visual descent point. Since this VOR approach is a non-precision approach, we need to take note of this visual descent point. According to the Aeronautical Information Manual, a visual descent point is a defined point on the final approach course of a non-precision straight-in approach procedure from which normal descent from the minimum descent altitude to the runway touchdown point may be commenced, provided the approach threshold of that runway, or approach lights or other markings identifiable with the approach end of that runway are clearly visible to the pilot. We are now just over 1 mile from COYAS and our altitude is 940 feet, 100 feet above the minimum descent altitude of 840 feet for this approach. We must not descend below the minimum descent altitude until we have visual sight of the runway. If we are unable to see the runway by the time of reaching the missed approach point at COYAS, we must execute the missed approach procedure. Suddenly, we spot runway 35 through the snowy conditions just one half nautical mile from the missed approach point at COYAS and 1.2 nautical miles from the Olympia VOR. We came in a little to the left of course but have just enough time to get back on course and execute the landing. We are coming in a little fast at about 75 knots and will reduce our airspeed to about 60 knots on final approach. Welcome to Olympia Regional Airport. We have successfully executed this VOR approach and will now get our taxi instructions from ATC. Thank you for watching the video. We hope you now have a better understanding of how to fly a VOR slash DME approach. Please like the video and subscribe for more flight training and aviation-related educational videos.